Hey, I'm Randy and you're watching The Cheap Audio Man. Here at The Cheap Audio Man, we talk about high value hi-fi home theater and headphone equipment. And today we're talking about trigger alert. We're talking about why some receivers, home theater AVR receivers are better than two channel integrated amplifiers for music. Few reasons why they are, maybe a couple of reasons why they're not. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee and let's trigger some people with some controversial stuff. The number one reason why some, some, we're not talking in absolutes here, why some home theater receivers are better than two channel integrated amps. DSP. Some really high end integrated amps are starting to add D-Rack or DS, not even D-Rack, but the Bucard L150 or I-150, L or an I, probably an I for integrated. I-150 has its own room correction. You can use your phone and it's going to do adjustments on levels, all sorts of things, similar to what Dirac will do on things like the NAD M10. So NAD, Arcam, Anthem, actually, everything starts with an A, I guess. Some of those companies are integrating Dirac and DSP and room correction into the integrated amplifiers. Here's the problem. They're all like $3,000 or even more. I kind of asked myself, why is that? Because you can get the Pioneer VLX VX305. I actually think there's a step down from that, maybe a seven channel. In any regard, you can get that receiver from Pioneer for around $1,000, 1100 max. So we're talking half, or in some cases, less than half of the same price for the NADM 10 or the M whatever it is, then the Bucard I-150, less than half, okay, to get Dirac. And Dirac's the real magic maker with some of these receivers, getting them to sound really, really good or getting them to sound better than some integrated amplifiers. So if DSP is number one, then Dirac is like 1A. 1B would be EQ. Even a Marantz NR1711 has Odyssey. I know some people don't like Odyssey as much as some of the other room corrections, especially now that Dirac is being implemented on lower priced products. Even Odyssey has access to a pretty good EQ. So very thorough. Now, is it the easiest to get to? No. But for these, for these applications, one has to be a bit of a not a power user, mentor, they have to be, someone needs to be pretty comfortable with getting in the settings to be able to access all of this. To be fair, you kind of have to be the same way to access DRAC even on two channel setups. So EQ, EQ, and we have distances, we have levels, we have all sorts of stuff that is just completely commonplace in the home theater world. Nobody would, nobody bats an eye at all of this horsepower, DSP horsepower in a receiver. But now suddenly it's in a two channel setup and we're like, oh my goodness, this is great. We should charge $3,000. No, it's been in receivers and now you have D-Rack in receivers that are just slightly more expensive than $1,000. Blows my mind, I'm blown away. My brain is blown away. Some people would probably say my brain has been blown away for a long time. In any regard, we can get D-Rack and receivers around $1,100. If they put them in it, and you get seven channels, right? And you put them in a two channel, and all of a sudden that's three grand? No. Price. Price. We just kind of talked about it. The NAD M10, I think it's three grand. The Bucard ILI 150 is around $3,000, depending upon exchange rates. The Onkyo and Pioneer are around... 1100 maybe the Morantz enter 1711 is around a thousand maybe and that one used to be 750 and most of these will go on sale so why are we paying two three times more for something that has less features and less channels people can argue that it's because it sounds way better i'm going to argue back it doesn't i just the whole reason this video exists is because I reviewed the D3045 from NAD. And I don't think it sounds very good. 
And I don't think it sounds nearly as good as my Marantz NR1711 home theater receiver that has seven channels, even when I'm not doing any DSP trickery. Even out of the box, just on in pure direct mode, I think the Marantz sounds better than the NAD. There's a lot to be said for that, simply because when I got it, it was 750 bucks, the Marantz. I even compared it to the Moon by Simonio 240i, which was one of the first videos I ever did on this channel. That is a 2,500, I think it's a $3,000 integrated amplifier at this time. The Moon by Sim Audio 240i. Don't buy it. It's not worth it. My Marantz NR1711 at around $600 or $700, whatever I spent for it at the time, was marginally less clear than the Moon by Sim Audio 240i. So save yourself $2,000, $3,000 and go buy some speakers instead of buying the Moon by Sim Audio 240i. They probably hate me at this point. Anyway. It doesn't take a rocket science, def I'm definitely not a rocket scientist, to figure out that there's not much of a difference between how my Marant sounded in pure direct mode and that Moon by Sim Audio sounded in, well, the only mode that it has. The point being is if they shove Dirac into a two-channel integrated amplifier, suddenly we're paying $3,000 for an amplifier that doesn't sound as good as something that's $1,000. I know my Pioneer upstairs, the VLX VX305, sounds one heck of a lot better than this NAD. And it's a little bit more expensive. I haven't heard the M10. I'd love to hear the M10. Send it over to me, please. I'll listen to it. I would surmise, I would guess, it's going to be pretty tough to beat the Pioneer and the Marantz. And the Marantz doesn't even have Dirac. If the Marantz had Dirac, that would be something else. Because the Marantz already sounds good. So price, price, price. Don't get me started on HDMI connectivity because that was another reason why I did this video because the NAD, sorry, I'm gonna keep showing it, D345, 3045, because if you pop an HDMI on the back of an integrated amplifier, all of a sudden somebody thinks you're some type of genius that discovered some type of new science stuff. It's just an HDMI connection. And frankly, almost every television or every modern television I, I know of has a, optical output so if you have a two channel amplifier the integrated amp just use the optical output of your television into it because you we get taxed out the rear end if they put an hdmi connection arc connection on the back of some magical two channel integrated amplifier all of a sudden we're paying a premium for that when every 350 dollars home theater receiver has eight of them on the back why is that why on the D3045, why is that $900? Why does it cost so much to have an HDMI connection on the back? The only thing I know is that AVRs have been doing it for 20 years and all of a sudden it's just now showing up on some of these integrated amplifiers and now we're paying a premium for them on something that doesn't even sound as good as what the receiver sounds out of the box without any DSP. I just don't get it. I don't get why people have to pay a premium for HDMI switching or not even switching just an hdmi connection on the back makes zero sense to me we're getting ripped off sorry we're getting ripped off we really are denon marantz onkyo pioneer they've been doing it for years and they haven't been gouging us on price how about feature set how about that so there are integrated amplifiers that have streamers in them. Fantastic. Like PlayFi. Okay, so let's take, uh, for instance, Audiolab has a streaming amplifier. NAD C338 has Chromecast. Hegel has AirPlay and some things like that. We always have to pay a premium for that. On top of an already expensive integrated amplifier. You know how many features are in that Pioneer VLX VX305? It has a PlayFi streamer which is a huge feature on the Audiolab streaming amplifier, 6,000 something or other, okay? I'm not blaming Audiolab for any of this. I think I'm getting that amplifier in or the one that doesn't have PlayFi in it. Point being is, if you take the PlayFi feature and you put it into an integrated amp, we have to put that up in lights and get super excited about it. PlayFi is legitimately a throwaway feature that probably no one is going to ever use on the Pioneer because it has things like Tidal Connect. It actually has another streaming platform. What I'm trying to say is PlayFi is not expensive to integrate. 
It's in everything. PlayFi has been in everything for the last seven years. It was one of the first streaming platforms that was widely adopted into things like soundbars. It's horrible. It doesn't work very well. What I'm trying to illustrate is not that PlayFi is the worst streaming platform available, but that some, some people use that integrated. SVS has done the same thing. Integrate it into an integrated amplifier and then charge a premium for it where you have home theater receivers that just have it as a throwaway feature set. So the Pioneer and the Marantz both have a built-in streamer. If you have a built-in streamer in a two-channel amplifier and HDMI connections, you're gonna be paying a lot for it, more than what most of these home theater receivers charge. Because my Marantz Center 1711 has Heos, again, not the greatest streamer, but it still has it. The Pioneer has Tidal Connect. Oh, they also have AirPlay too, right? So the receivers have AirPlay, they have Bluetooth, they have Heos or the Pioneer version. And we have to only get one on these integrated amps where we have all of them on home theater receivers. You get surround with them. I know we should we really have to even mention it, but yes, you get a surround receiver with when you buy a surround receiver, okay? Atmos, Dolby, Dolby Digital, whatever it is. Most of these receivers too, some of the newer ones, you can actually run a dedicated two channel setup within the existing set of speakers. So I have the Moran Center 1711. I can run a five channel surround system and now I have two channels left and a dedicated two channel system at the click of a button so I can have different speakers. So if I wanna have different speakers for my two channel setup, I can do that. But if I wanna watch a movie, now granted I can watch a movie on a two channel integrated amplifier and if I have the right speakers, it can sound great, good. It's not gonna sound as good as my home theater receiver. Here's the problem. Two channel integrated amplifiers with any of these new feature sets are getting ridiculously expensive. And we get charged a premium when they put in, when they integrate things that have been in home theater receivers for decades. Here's the other problem for two channel amplifiers. DRAC mainly is getting implemented into more affordable home theater receivers and affordable signal processors too. So now we have home theater receivers that are getting cheaper with DRAC and two channel that's getting more expensive. So we're having a, it just doesn't make any sense to me. People are going to argue that two channel sounds it's so much better. Does it, at this point with DRAC, it's starting to get to the point where I just can't tell a difference. I really can't. Even without DRAC, I could barely tell a difference between a $3,000 now dollar integrated two-channel amp from Move by Semony with nothing. It has zero feature set except for an internal DAC. I could barely hear a difference between a, at the time, $700 seven-channel AVR. My Marantz. I think the Marantz sounds pretty good. So I think for most people out there, even if you're remotely interested in watching movies, if someone was asking me what they should get, if they were looking at a two channel streaming amplifier, two channel, if their budget was around $1,000, I would say, look at the Pioneer, VLX, VX305, look at the Onkyo, look at the Marantz NR1711. Simply because they may, they may not perform as well as a two channel amplifier, marginally, but they're gonna be half to a third of the price if you want DRAC in your two channel integrated amplifier. You're gonna have HDMI switching, you're gonna have an integrated streamer, you're gonna have all these things which you wouldn't have on the two channel amp and it's cheaper. But there could be a problem. There's a risk that you run with the home theater receiver. I got off the phone with my brother yesterday. He just bought a new house and it has a theater room. And none of the stuff works anymore because it's all obsolete. So, and I know this is a bit of a extreme example. He has a projector that it does take HDMI, but I don't think it takes any of the modern HDMI like revisions. He has a receiver 
that has three HDMI inputs, but again, none of the none of the most modern HDMI connections. And uh, it even runs component. So he has, for him, what he believes to be expensive stuff because it was purchased 20 years ago or 15 years ago for X amount. So probably five, $10,000 system that is basically a paperweight at this point. Now I could figure out a way to get an optical signal out of a Roku stick or something like that and maybe patch him up. But I told him like, listen, dude, that tech is just dead. You're gonna need to get, what I told him to do is get a new TV and then we can take an optical and at least get it into his speakers. Yes, he's not gonna have all the latest and greatest stuff, but he doesn't really care about that. That's my point though. These home theater receivers could end up going obsolete because things change quickly. Even five years ago, a home theater receiver is probably barely gonna do the job in regards to HDMI. That's kind of the real kind of Achilles heel of a home theater receiver is the HDMI may change and your receiver may not work anymore. You could always use an optical output from a smart TV or something like that, but there's that's not an ideal situation. So while on paper, and for most people, a home theater AVR is gonna provide you with way more value than a two-channel amplifier, that value may be mitigated if you're having to buy a new home theater receiver every five years. Because if you buy a decent integrated amplifier with nothing, <laughs> you can at least keep that with you for 30 or 40 years or as long as it lasts or as long as you want to keep it, right? So my question is, is all the integration of this new technology going to make these new integrated amplifiers with streamers, with HDMI and all things like that, is it going to make them obsolete now as things change? Probably not. One of the cool design philosophies that some companies are implementing is basically a module that you can switch out. So if anything does go obsolete, the majority of the integrated amp is just the same and you just pop out these modules. I think that's probably the way to go because that will kind of take that argument for obsolescence off the table. In any regard, this video isn't designed to get people upset. It's actually exciting because as customers, we have so many different options. It's very exciting to have a home theater receiver sound as good as it does now, because that wasn't the case even a couple of years ago at this price. So if you want to support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon, patreon.com slash cheap body man. Every Sunday night, we have Patreon only Zooms, Patreon only Facebook group, Patreon only Discord group. We do Patreon giveaways. You can also leap. Use the links in the description. Those are affiliate links, including signing up for Amazon Music and Tidal. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Binge listen. Fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man.